The leaf's still on the first round. I am Nothing too much is happening. Like getting it back. Yeah, it is currently like a NC State is in the lead. They do have a pick, or two picks actually up since we are down and a lot is going down. It is 2v4 with C4 getting another kill onto Masaka. It's actually going to be a 2v1 as Dyer's downed. And there it goes. A very quick attack from NCSU bombarding the site. Yeah, it was definitely very good play. Very fast attack. Uh, C4 managing to get that pick onto the dock early in um, VIP definitely helped get that map pressure early on in the round, and that's going to give them their first run of the map. Um, what do you expect GMU to do differently now that they're thinking about which site they want to go? Maybe pick a different site as Penthouse is not normally uh, your first picked site. Maybe but they're going back to it, so hopefully they're going to try and just hang on a little bit tighter. They're going to be getting the Maestro back on the board. Uh, same lineup, not the 6 pick onto the mirror. I think Capcan's different. And we're going to be seeing the IQ still in play. Nothing really of note. Maybe they're just going to run back to site just to like try and win their gunfights a little bit better, as they know where they might be pushing from now. Yeah, Snicker with 10 seconds left is hovering cap can. We'll actually switch to the smoke, possibly. Definitely switching it up. Going to prevent um, the late game plans and the pushes onto site. Maybe trying to get a little more site control. Pair it with that lesion that Mazda's running. It probably, you know, slow down NC State's push a little bit more. We're actually going to be almost seeing a team ace from, I believe that was NCSU as one of their players has two kills as everyone else has one <laughs> uh pretty s similar setup they're gonna be having the maestro cam watching the bathroom hatch drop from a little uh bailiff hole and then shotgun floor from the mira outside into vip and yeah, it is, Go it is uh, important to know that uh, Larry is picking up Twitch, which it can definitely be super detrimental to GMU's to push, as, you know, Mira and oh, Maestro and, the and Jaeger. Oh, and the Ooh, spawn peak coming off onto the Twitch soap. Your Mira's and Maestro's are safe. Easy. That's how you do it. Definitely a very aggressive spawn peak. Not necessarily an operator you want to lose early in the round, but it is going to work out for GMU. We're going to be seeing a player actually repel up towards Aqua, I believe, um, as two people are outside of service entrance. Dire Legends listening out, seeing if anyone is above them. Snicker, Pup, and everyone else holding sight. Not too much action after that spawn kill. NC State definitely being forced to take their time now that they are down one operator. And also, one of their heavy fragging ops, too. They're going to have to make up that fragging power somehow, middle of this round. Um, hmm. Yeah, already almost halfway through the round. And only the spawn peaks happen, so that really put an impact onto them. Ping's going to be going off from the Maestro Cam, as they now know people are pushing Hall of Fame. We're going to be seeing some pre-fires go off towards the Miras, but IQ's going to fall back towards uh, VIP. It looks like Nerd is going to repel up, looking to help out their team. Uh, it's, you know, minute three left in the round. Uh, NC State definitely taking their time. I mean, we do have Dyer sitting below the that vertical. VIP penthouse wall, looking to maybe trick whatever they're going to do with that Hibana. Then a long peek onto the Legion from Mazda. He's going to... There's going to be yellow pings going off towards, I believe that was Bathroom. As they still know, two people are in Hall of Fame. Capital bolt going off behind one of the mirrors, I, I think. We switched away. Second Capital fire going on. Oh, C4 is going off. He will be picking up C4 with a C4. Uh, the plant will go off from Nerd Gamer as Andrew's going to pick up another kill onto Dyer. Uh, their Maestro Pup is actually. Barely hanging on, as Mazda's still on the roam, a lot of uh, fragging potential. Impact's going off, going to be alerting the location of Mazda, as now they're not paying attention towards Hall of Fame and more towards the VIP doorway. 
Bungo. The mushroom will cave peek. will be getting popped. I can like Jamie you might not have enough time to defuse this. It's now a 1v3 as Andrew Ryan gets a double kill. Looks like NCC will pick up their second round win of the map. That was crazy how they still had people on sites putting the plant down. They don't even need to hold down site like to cancel rotates back into site. They just outfragged them from around it. So they had one person in and then they were surrounded. Yeah, Jamie after that loss definitely deciding to switch it up a little bit. Opting to go for hookah billiards instead of that other second floor site. Uh, how do you think they're going to play this slightly differently? Not just the fact that they're picking site, but what do you think they need to change in their play style and to really uh, get their, their first win of the map? First of all, I'd probably call for a castle on those windows as window play is so big on this map. You pop open hookah window, you have like full view of both sites all the way into aqua. So you're going to really need to break up those lines of sight using the castle barricades but seeing as they did not bring that it's going to be a very big uh firefight happening between sites some sneaky little valcam spots going in between walls to see two sites at once so that one that we just saw thrown right there you'll actually be able to see into vip as well as the 90 hallway And it's looking like they're definitely going to utilize those black guys. Um, definitely a little bit more intel than they would have previously. Um, you know, they're, they're actually going for a lot of intel, intel denial uh, with that, that lesion and that mute combo with that mirror. They're definitely going to be trying to even counter that twitch too. Um, that's going to help them out a little bit here. Those cap cans are probably, if, if they don't decide to prioritize the cap can traps as uh, Twitch actually picked up both shock drones, so not actually even bringing the one into sight. So she has probably 10 Z uh, of her shocks on the board. Um, if you prioritize the Capcan traps, that's going to be one drone completely done. And then you still have a chance to get pick up the three mutes and maybe a Jaeger or a couple lesions in the way. Or, oh, Misaka actually going to be really low health already. Oh, it looks like Masaka's going to be cornered in VIP from roof and from that big window. And even, looks like VIP, Hall, Hall of Fame, sorry. Going live. Yeah, he's really very... going to need some assistance. Yeah, it looks like Masaka's in a very hard place. It's going to be very hard to get out. It's going to peak. Larry, looks like, yep, Larry will pick up the first kill onto Masaka. Giving them a slight early lead in the round. He's also going to be picking up that uh, Valkyam if, if he didn't catch that. Uh, another Habana Excaros going off, so that is two. Um, we're going to be seeing Pup playing 90. C4 pro sensing the presence of him as Leary's going to be pushing behind him. He sees the elbow. Pup turned around and there goes Pup. Putting them now into a what seems to be a 2v5 as, yeah, as a 2v5. Let's see if we're picking up that most previous kill. is now up to just Dyer and Mazda to hold site. Dyer Legend is going to pick up one on the enter in the site. Looks like Nerd is going to take a lot of shots and manage to just get away barely. Bongo is going to pick up its Mazda, leaving it just up to Dyer being pushed from many angles on Hookah. And it looks like it down by Larry. Larry with, I believe, a nice 3K to end up that round. NCSU is going to be on this absolute demolish so far. Their momentum is just carrying them through the rounds as GMU kind of seems broken. Um, just not being able to grasp onto anything as they will yeah, be I trying to run back Penthouse. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, NC State is definitely showing uh, very good patience, especially in that Legion kill in 90. Uh, instead of just sh trying to shoot for the elbow or shoot for the butt um, to get a little bit of damage, <laughs> they waited him out and let the Legion, you know, go one way or the other. And, you know, once you're trapped, 
you either stay there for the rest of the round or you die. And that's, you know, that's a good position that NC State had there. It is important to notice that this is their map and they are picking an attack. So, you know, it's it's definitely obvious that they're very comfortable and not only attacking coastline, but going against what other teams have to throw at them here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be playing defense, especially with all this momentum that they've carried through. Um, hopefully, they might get a shutout on their own map. I'm cheering for them for that, but I also would like to see them sort of contention with uh, GMU as they haven't been able to really grasp on that. Uh, nothing really of note in this setup. We're going to be seeing some default drones as they just run the site. which I believe is new to the site, as opposed to a maestro. And we're also going to be seeing a view. But other than that, I don't think anything else really new. Yeah, I mean, you know, GMU just has to find their rhythm here. You know, they're just a little bit off, you know, not really being able to pick up um, that Western penthouse wall going into VIP, not really being able to deny um, the breach into that. But at the same time, you know, all it takes is one or two rounds to really get you back where you are in terms of momentum. So it's definitely, definitely possible. And 03 is not the worst to come back from in terms of, you know, round deficit for GMU. So I wouldn't count them out yet, but we'll see how this round goes. But as most maps go, it's mostly defender sided. So if you already have three rounds on attack, that's going to be really rough to try and take over on your attacking rounds later uh, on in the match. Dire Legends is already gonna be roaming around near that first floor lobby entrance. Nerd Gamer, chilling on the second floor. Looks like NC State already a minute in, not really pushing terribly hard, but Larry is gonna push into CCTV. Possibly picking up Dire, there will be a firefight. Looks like Shots exchanged, both taking a little bit of damage and falling back, but looks like we're not going to get a pick early on this row. But even if there was no pick onto the IQ, that still really pauses the take from NCSU as they know someone's roaming downstairs. But as I say that, Leary's going to go for the kill, go for the head actually, and take out Dire, which is one of their few roamers as now it seems that they have most of main floor covered. Yeah, Andrew and Lawyer working it together to take out that roamer. Now they have mostly free roam to push onto site with Nergamer heading to VIP, looking to breach that wall into penthouse. The Habana x will go off. The Snicker bones. Oh, look Side. at the cheeky angle by Snicker. I've seen people actually play inside the cabinet. I've never seen someone use the cabinet as like a peak hole. Looks to me like Jimmy has been forced pretty much all exclusively on site. Their gamer X card is going to set those off. Snicker aware is going to rotate all the way to bathroom. Very dangerous spot with hatch open. However, I do not believe there's anyone up there to frag him. That's interesting that they open up the hatch but not really use it. As I say that, it's now going to be put down to a 3v4 as Misaka is going to pick up a kill and also C4 picked up a kill onto, I believe, that was Mazda. Yeah, Mazda on the Ella going down for the count for this round with only 15 seconds left. Nerd Gamer is going to go for the plant. C4 is going to miss. It looks like the plant does go off. It is now up to GMU to win with only two left. Snickerbones does take out Nerd Gamer and Leary at the same time. Maz Misaka is down. Snickerbones exchanging shots. Going to get knocked very low. Looks like he's they're forced between the big window and Andrew Ryan will pick up up guys is all up to Misaka who actually got picked up in between that Andrew Ryan is going to get a triple oh. kill onto Snicker yeah it's it pretty oh he's going to oh. pick up a kill and that's going to be a 1v1 but it on the there's no time left to defuse As, all you can really do at this point is just pad your KD Yeah, Andrew Ryan is gonna get that quad kill actually on Osako, finishing out the round for their team. Very impressive showing actually from NC State. However, it is good to notice that GMU did very good 
Um, yeah, what am I trying to say? Sorry. They did very good at actually putting a lot of pressure. Um, they did miss the C4 on the plant. But besides that, they actually got very close to retaking sight. They did good at picking up their teammates and managing time up until the end. When you're down, you know, 1v2, 1v3, it's very hard, especially with, I believe, a seven-second defuse timer um, yes. to, you know, get those kills and defuse. So we're actually going to be seeing a glass, possibly, unless it's being hovered. But, um, oh, they did just were thinking about going kitchen, but... As we see now, they have decided on Penthouse one more time. I feel like they just haven't been able to get momentum that they want on Penthouse. So the better choice would either for them to be going to a completely new site, start fresh, or just completely change up their setup for Penthouse because clearly it is not working. All right. Let's say we're going to see a six pick from Glass on the Glass and then a switch <laughs> from Glass on the Glass again. Um, it is important to note that uh, Glass rate of fire changes to just come in, so he's dealing with a faster gun now. Uh, you know whether you think that helps him out or not. You know that's that's really up to the user to decide. Uh, but that is definitely gonna help him out in Siege, which feels like every season it gets a little bit faster paced than it used to be. But the mirrors do put, get put down soft. So if you put the glass outside on the, the garage area roof from Penthouse window, he gets a perfect angle onto the mirror. So as soon as she stands up, her head will be taken off. If you can hit the shots. Yeah, I mean, uh, the so on one hand, the, that soft mirror on that other wall that's usual reinforced actually makes it a little bit easier to get that C4 angled into the corner that NC has been usually planning. But then the problem is, as you said, that is very exposed from window. And if you have someone on garage, then, you know, especially glass, that's very susceptible. And you have to take out glass early if you want that option late game. Glass actually repelling up. Um, interesting. But because, oh, look at that long angle held by Misaka onto uh, Billiard's window. It's a nice hold. I might have to use that. That's not billiards. That's VIP window. I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that is very good hold. Um, looks like they're trying to put pressure on VIP to slow down NC State because that's pretty much where they've been pushing exclusively. Uh, you know, but they're trying to stay off and not get Rome or Rome cleared very early. Leary are going to push in lobby, and it, C4 will actually pick up its, its Mazda early in the round. There goes the Ella. Um, C4 is going to be now doing some droning for his team as Leary's going to take out some defaults. Uh, Pup actually playing that vert. Uh, no, Pup, I don't think played the vertical. Did he play vertical last time? I believe he did. I might be wrong. I just I'm just talking randomly now. Um, he's going to hear the repel from the glass. A attempted knife onto the gridlock but he will still pick up the kill putting him now equal 4v4 as snicker holding that uh, uh toxic uh, my brain's not working dope and shire take over <laughs> yeah let's talk about we'll get actually pick up a kill as uh nc state also gets the refrag so they're lucky you know lucky pretty even uh jim you definitely doing a little bit better however one of those mirrors will get popped Dyer is aware that Larry is over in that hallway. Looks like the other one is also going to go down. Uh, still droning pretty late game, actually, as we're going to see a drone taken out. But Misaka is actually going to be taken out as well as Leary's going to be put down. Uh, Dyer holding onto sight. He's going to be watching the, ro the angle as he... Nerd will be fully concussed from Ella. Smoke's going off. Habana's going off. Bullet's going out. Dyer's going to be barely hanging on to his life as he flips out to the shotgun, downing Nerd Gaming. Or killing Nerd Gaming, sorry. As it's now very equal 2v2 with health and players. 15 seconds left. NCSU is going to have to do something. As Smoke is still going to be laying behind the couch. Shotgun going off. And that's the round. GMU is going to take their first round on Penthouse. Yeah, Sticker Bones managing to pick up Ryan and Dyer managing to pick up um, the last. I did not quite catch who it was. However, it doesn't matter as, you know, GMU wins their first round. 
I believe it is now the last round of the half. Yes, that is correct. Uh, GMU is currently looking, you know, not just to get wins because that's what you want to do. Um, but, you know, they're trying to make a 2-4, which is a lot better to come back from than a 1-5. And, you know, you mentioned earlier them bringing Castle. Now, you know, they're going hookah billiards and bringing Castle. How do you think that's going to help them here, especially on a site with so many windows and entry points? I mean, I already said it earlier. I'll repeat myself because I like repeating myself. The Castle is so important for these windows because you take off one of the windows uh, looking straight to the site that you're going to have the your default rotate that looks through Aqua, Billiards, and Hookah. See, with that glass, he can ju- you can just put him on that window. Oh, wait. I don't want to speak too soon. Yep, there. It's locked in. With that glass, you can see fully into sight, you can have... It's like a feeding ground for glass or Blackbeard. Yeah, you know, I... Definitely gonna help them out here, especially because Larry is gonna pick up the glass with that nice fur coat, maybe parka. I don't, I don't know what it's called. It's something. The pimp it. jacket. The pimp jacket. Yes. Um, <laughs> Glassley is gonna come out here as Larry is gonna switch for more of a really hard, hard fragging entry fragger role to, you know, just picking up glass, which can be used as entry fragging. Like, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you know, when you've got a site such as Hookah. Uh, with a lot of external views, you can set up at runes, you can set up at pool, and you can definitely play around with where you're scoping in from. Talking about skins, as of right now, uh, since the Halloween event is so new, CEA has put a temporary ban onto all the skins just to avoid conflict, so that's why you're not seeing any of those spicy new skins being played by our lovely players today. They are nice skins, though. Uh, well, early action phase starts, uh, they do look pretty nice. Um, I think I haven't played the event because exams and such, but you know, they're all, <laughs> it's, all a, it's a great good. event. It's basically like Sledge Myers, but a lot faster paced and a lot scarier. <laughs> We're going to be seeing Glass. I believe he was holding ruins. Yeah, still holding ruins, getting peaks onto both sites. Um, interesting to see him not repelling Hookah as well, but it is a dangerous window to hold, especially when you have so many people sitting in sight. We're going to see a quick pick off uh, from C4 onto Dyer. As he's going to slowly push into Billiards. He's going to get another kill off, and there's going to be an attempted knife, and he will get the triple kill so quickly, and you're not even halfway through the round, and he's already has most of the site covered. He's going to be pushing into Hookah Lounge. He's going to get another pick off, possibly. There's the quad kill. Could he get the ace? What do you think? I don't know. Masaka is off-site, is currently in NCU's best interest to not really pursue and go for the plant as Andrew Ryan is actually playing the diffuser. One second left on the plant timer and it will go off with just Masaka dealing with a 1v5. Not a lot of time left to take out five operators and get the diffuse. If C4 wants this ace, he's holding the wrong angle. But C4's gonna get the ace! And with a flawless round from across the hallway. Beautiful showing on that last attacking round, showing that NCSU showing that just because you won that for one round does not mean you're gonna win another. Yeah, C4 with a uh, very good ace there. Um, very aggressive push. I mentioned that Larry switched off for more of an like hard entry frag roll to the glass, and that really let C4, you know, just pushing with the IQ and just just tear through. Um, those those openings uh we are seeing um team switch sides first blackbeard now. of the game yes that's correct oh, we are and there's blackbeard. a goyo so c4 will have to actually use that six pick as he did not pick in time as we will see it um there goes bandit uh so any plan that they had of hiding an operator is now gone but Still, C4 is probably going to pick up another C4 op as Mir is holding one. As they're going to be holding Hookah and Billiards. So, I think we were also seeing our first Thatcher Thermite of the game. Definitely, yeah. Um, I can definitely see that. Uh, being maybe GMU expecting them to possibly go Penthouse first. Uh, because, you know, uh, Thermiting that... Uh, back wall into the courtyard from billiards is very risky because you can get peeked from VIP, from luggage, from all those hallways, and even from lobby, it's very risky. Um, 
But, you know, that VIP into Penthouse is a much safer attack for Thatcher Fairlight. So, they might have thought it was a little bit of a different site, but, you know, we'll see how they play out here. You know, as you said, we are seeing Thatcher and Thermite Blackbeard come out for the first time. Uh, NC State not picking out any new operators. Almost brought a Goyle. We did see them pick Clash <laughs> for a quick second. I, I want to see a Clash brought out here today. I think they were hovering the Clash, but since the slip-up with uh, C4, he could not actually pick it in time. But speaking of C4, he's actually 10-3 and three right now, followed by Andrew, who is 7-2. and two. Yeah, definitely the Fraggers doing their oh, job. As it looks like Dyer is actually going to get picked off very early in the round from Leary. Uh, very detrimental spawn kills. That is and that's Diffuser hard. dropped. Yeah, Diffuser is going to be down. And see, or Sorry, GMU will have to spend the time to go pick that up, as most of them are currently poolside. Misaka going to be playing the very big window at the Billiards. He is their biggest player right now, the most deadly. But as I say that, Bisaka is going to get dropped by Leary on a run out. And Leary's gonna go down and taken out by Mazda. As we're now in a 4v3. And Diffuser still needs to be pick up, picked up from where it was dropped off very early into the round. As there goes a minute of your round and so much has already happened. Yeah, GMU down one operator, but not out for the count. As Snickerbones is, already has map control in lobby, is free to push up the luggage side or possibly contest blue lives. Um, C4 is gonna get in a little bit of firefight as long as pups into the cool vibe stairwell. Bungo holding that mirror window very tight. That's a great mirror because you use that rotate hole that you have there also as a peak hole. We're gonna be sicker, seeing sicker bones in hallway. He sees an open mirror, but mirror is actually not playing behind it. He is actually quite a ways away over in VIP. As yes, we will sir. also see Nerd Gamer holding on to billiards. Looks like Snicker Bones and C4 are set by Destiny to enter to cross paths here as <laughs> they're pushing by each other. Uh, Snicker might oh. be aware that someone is he, there. But Snicker's on the drone though, so this could be an easy pick for C4 if he notices. Bungo is He's now going to be the off drone. the drone. Here comes the oh. Just wall bang him, wall bang him. And there goes, there goes your IQ. Oh, looks like Snicker oh. might be alive. Oh, nope, no, we'll nope, get down nope. and <laughs> taken out by C4. So Didn't to, know we were getting shot from. Yeah, it's up to Mazda and Pup, who's pushing up cool vibes, who will be quickly taken out. Oh, oh. there's a TK actually by Andrew, <laughs> making sure he Andrew. wants that kill onto Pup. Andrew and they know where the last player is. Yeah, they're gonna uh, get that get that double kill right there. I guess you can call it. As, uh, <laughs> it's off to Mazda. Chilling outside. Looks like they will get be taken out by oh, Ryan. Oh, gonna go for the kill. trade. That was Wait, definitely you see uh, Andrew got the triple kill. Oh yeah, I mean plus plus the team kill. Yeah, I, if I was gonna say uh, if it was a triple kill plus the teammate, then it would be a quad. <laughs> yeah. That was, Anyways, that was definitely good. Uh, for another good showing from NC State, as it is currently match point. Um, as if you did not notice by the scoreboard, we do go to a uh, first to six or you know six six tie. Uh, so NC State just needs to win it's first to one seven round. six six tie. First to seven, yes, I misspoke. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so all they all NC State needs is you know this one round. They just have to defend penthouse and. They win the map, and then we're on onto Cafe. However, GMU has to win five rounds in a row, which is a pretty tall order. Not necessarily undoable, um, but, you know, if we're looking at the statistics so far for both sides, we really see NC State having a little bit just more fragging power than GMU really does. And it might just be their positioning or whatnot. And as if they listen to me, NC State is probably going to bring that clash. Yeah, I don't know if it's a memeing potential on Leary or he's going to pull some bikini body turtling strats. But I was I was hoping to see the the shield v shield Monty versus Clash battle. Uh, as I will there's... no longer have that as Pup swapped off onto the Blackbeard. Picking up where um, I believe Misaka, yes, Misaka left off. 
Yeah, there's nothing scarier than a than a good clash man with good teammates because you know if you <laughs> coordinate with your teammates, you can you can really play that roam very well. And then not only that, but you can also you know just you know clash spin really just trip up your attackers by just you know peeking them with shield without and whatnot. But it's you know it depends. You know it all depends on what their play style is. Some people like to play clash where you just pretty much turn into a Beyblade and then just start spinning around. Other people Spit like bot. to play, play Clash where you just stand there and then let your teammates get the peaks. And that could work very well here. Interesting hold by C4. Actually, oh, they're going to be doing a huge 90 hold. Look at all that barbed wire, all that damage that Leary will be able to rack up as they will be uh, walking slowly because of Clash as well as the barbed wire. Yeah, so this is definitely a very good pocket strap, but also slightly dangerous because if they get, if uh, GMU gets hold of 90 and manages to split push class, class really the only spot they have to go is in that corner under the camera 90. And once you're there, if you don't have the teammates to back you up in that moment, then you can really get, you can really get, um, really get in a bad position there is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but, we'll, you know, we'll see if it, it pays off because... Yo, G GMU is down five rounds. They cannot afford to waste one. Misaka is actually going to be a pretty big player right now, as his asphyxiation bolts will actually be the only thing that can stop that clash. Ah, uh, Maz is going to be going for the head of C4 very quickly into, uh, not quickly into the round, halfway through the round, as I feel like they don't understand what they're going to be walking into in a minute, as Misaka is pushing through um, VIP, the Hall of Fame area uh as Maz is checking his behind before pushing in anywhere repping that f2 black ice oh oh yeah we're gonna be seeing the fmg nine smoke close to the shotgun i guess he's gonna go for that firepower as leary's gonna be doing some turtling slash bikini body strats whatever you like to call them uh that's your nade going off as they're gonna be trying to get that main wall but they have no... Oh, they did have the mute to deny breach. Sorry. Yeah, what's NC State having most most of their uh, utility put on 90? A uh, push from the back of Penthouse could prove detrimental oh, as Dyer is going to play at the Diffuser oh, and will get taken out by Nerd Gamer with the C4. Definitely going to be a huge, huge C4 from that window. And it is now 4v4. Oh, as I say that, Masaka takes out Weird from behind. When I say Misaka is going to take out Leary, I call that at the beginning. I predict the future. It's Mazda. It's going to get Andrew Ryan. And looks like a pup will get a Nerd Gamer. And Mazda will get the double kill onto Bungo. Actually winning GMU that round. Uh, that was... What do you think GMU did, really, that helped prevent them from really having to go against that Clash? Um, They just had everyone utility dump onto the Clash. I saw some smokes go off towards it. Um, and as soon as they started picking around, uh, off the people around the Clash, Clash was just kind of stuck by themselves. So as soon as you have someone push to the side of Clash, in front of Clash, and to the other side of Clash, she can only look so many directions. Yeah, I mean, also, they, uh, Jimmy did recognize that in, in the fact that, you know, why go 90 when you can just push uncontested in VIP <laughs> and then breach in the back wall and play it? And that's what they did. Um, we are going to be didn't seeing two oh. operators oh, come out, out that we My haven't bad. seen yet. Uh, which is Ma we are we are seeing Valk come back out. Uh, we are going to see. Maz oh, I wanted Eagle. to see the blitz. Ah, I hate when they hype me up like that. I like to see the Mimi ops. Like, I want to see Tachanka. If Leary pulls out a Tachanka, hats off to him. <laughs> also, looks like we are going double bar. That is blue and sunrise. Oh, uh, my only big really question that's really hitting me right now is does Leary have the boss G <laughs> is what I want to know um, boss G ACOG gonna... in the chat please and thank you <laughs> are we gonna hashtag boss G ACOG on this round yep. nope no no boss G. we're running the K1A uh, probably the smarter pick um I'm probably gonna get roasted in chat for uh for roasting the boss G but uh you know NC State definitely does have a four round lead, but you know, you don't want to throw that. That's not, you can't just let up just because you're four rounds ahead. They're definitely going to be looking to uh, get a little bit of. Oh, Lear going to go for a spawn peak. Potentially. 
Tesla gonna pick up Dyer. Oh. And there goes Dyer. Ooh. Easy. That was an easy 4v5, not even like 15 seconds into the round. Oh my gosh. Yeah, GMU is the now big... gonna be aware that Leary is hanging up towards Penthouse luggage area. And they're gonna have to go around and get the fuser, uh, which is gonna cost them a little bit of time. And Leary can go again for a run out on the Brain side. I believe that's the second time Dyer has been spawn peaked. I kind of feel bad for him. But at the same time, you gotta expect these things. I actually yeah, used I mean, that spawn peak on Duke earlier today when we were testing this map out. <laughs> Larry is doing a very good job at rotating around as C4 will actually pick up Pup Zog. Not looking too good for GM and GMU, sorry, right now. But you know, they do have a good push as C4 is gonna take some shots. Masaka is actually gonna be the one to take some shots. That's my bad. And we put down below 25, definitely dangerous territory for them. Verticality is a big, big standpoint on this map because all of that floor is breachable. So as soon as you get vert vertical control, you basically have full control of the site, which I'm hoping to see Maz to do some of, but he doesn't have, any, have anything to actually break open that speak. Yeah, so there's no breach charges on that. Misaka is actually going to be taking off the head of Nerd Gamer, putting them now into a 4v3 with Misaka being super low. Yeah, that was definitely a good pick. That was on their Maestro. As C4 will get a double kill back onto Masaka. Get in the refrag for their team. It's now just down to Sticker and it's Mazda to save GMU from losing this map. As Sticker does actually take down C4 and Andrew Ryan putting it a 2v2 with the double kill. But he's so, so low. <laughs> no minute left in the round though. They do have the time. As Bungo, it looks like it's going to push up. It's like... Leary has a long angle off onto that doorway, and there's still the Nitro available. He just Nitro's that uh, wall. He'll probably get the pick off onto Sticker. It's Mazda looking for the flank out onto Puka Balcony. Bungo is going to stay in Sunrise Bar as Leary is maybe looking for the flank onto NC State. Mazda's Possibly the, the run out from that window. No, they're gonna come back in, take out the Twitch drone. Gonna have a little bit of time taken off, but you know, only 15, 17 seconds oh. left in the round between you. It's up to it's Mazda and Sticker to save out the round. Larry is gonna be peak, but not take any damage. We'll think again. A little bit of firefight going off, and we'll get down. Oh. It's gonna be a 2v1. The plant has to go down. He has to throw the C4, but the C4's already gone. Shotgun's gonna go out. Plant's gonna be happening in B. It's now a 1v1 as Bungo has to retake site. Oh, he flicked on Mazda and he's going to get the defuse. And that's going to be game for NCSU. Match one going to NCSU. Congratulations to NCSU, by the way, on their beautiful execution of this map. <coughs> yeah, NCSU going to pick up their first or map win of the night. Now they just have to win the next one to win out the series. GB will have to win the next one to tie up this series. I definitely good half from both teams. I can definitely see. Um, I want to see how teams adapt and play to cafe uh, because that's definitely a newer, newer map in the rotation just coming out this fall, fall semester season. Um, you know, do you have anything left to say for this half? Um, sorry, my, my throat's a little dry from that casting. What are you drinking? Um, you know, just some some casual gamer juice called. Let me get it ready. Rogue Energy. Rogue energy. Rogue energy. Anyways, so use code CEA at checkout on Rogue Energy to get a free 10% off. All proceeds will be going to the prize pool of this gameplay. So, I've been awkward. That's King Dopenshire. Our next map will be Cafe, and we will see you after the break.
Welcome back, everybody, to CEA Siege with your Wednesday night cast. We're going to our second game of NCSU White versus GMU D2. We are going to cafe. Okay. If you missed our first half, we had NC win on coastline seven versus GMU with two. Uh, that's round score. Um, so now we're going to see, you know, who's going to get first to seven or if this is going to tie six, six GMU is currently looking to tie up this uh, series tonight by winning this map. NC state is currently looking to win it out by besting GMU. There's a Oh, we're going to be seeing gridlock ban this time. Uh, we're probably going to be seeing a jackal as well from GMU. Or GMU just doesn't ban the jackal. Hopefully going to go for a, a 6 0 half with the jackal and then just have to fend off one round with it. We will see, though. As, as I'm shut down immediately, there goes jackal. Zero gameplay. <coughs> yeah. I can, uh, that, the gridlock ban is actually, not gonna lie, maybe a target ban. Uh, maybe they just don't have to deal with that when they defend. Uh, cl clash ban. Um, I guess we're not gonna see more clash play, uh, from NC, or from NC State. Uh, however, uh, <laughs> looks like NC State is gonna get their last ban to Chanka. 100%. Ah, uh, no, it's gonna be Mira. Oh, that means right, goes up. Wait. Whoa. Yeah. Um that that's that's Dog. the risk of attacking first and not banning Echo. You leave you leave that echo open and you know, there are reasonable counter picks to him. You know, you could go IQ, you can uh go Thatch, you know, you can uh, uh just kill Echo, but um, besides <laughs> that, it's it's really um that's really just gonna be a counter play between do they wanna face Clash or Echo and you know that's just we're just gonna see how that works out for GMU. Uh, how do you think this uh, game is going to go? Um, have you seen other teams play before on this this map, or is this really... Uh... Um, okay. <laughs> I've played this map a lot as my coach is trying to, like, get us better on this map. But, realist, like, this map's a lot about verticality. A lot of it uh, for, like, attacking-wise and defending-wise. Um, like, you want someone in piano like cigar area if you're holding downstairs uh train like area like train mining dining all that um if you're upstairs you're gonna want people below or in freezer um interesting that echo is on the board people just not picking him i would like to mention that as well but as we are gonna be seeing a top floor hold big holds to watch for are cigar Freezer and white stairs as well as red stairs because that's yeah, like every entrance major entrance that also has a large opportunity of flanking it is important to note that we are seeing pulse and no magic picks on both sides both of them were banned in the previous map um so that's going to be interesting to see how each team uses those banned operators in this map i can definitely see nomad being used to you know flush out um, entrances into whichever site they pick to plant, maybe flush someone out of a corner, like perhaps behind that desk in Cigar, but your piano room, sorry. Uh, yeah. looks like Nerd actually is gonna go for that spawn peak. Is he gonna get shot at? Wait, wait, wait. Is he is gonna... He does not get the pick, no damage done on, on either of them. Yeah, Pup is uh, luckily gonna come away alive on that. They will have to watch that garage peak, however, it looks like no one from NC State is going to opt to go for that. We're going to be seeing Pulse playing below, talking about verticality. Um, having a long peak. And mostly main floor control, as you have the two major entrances blocked off just by standing in that point. IQ going to be going to town on the Legion Mines. As we might see, oh, we do see the Blackbeard. Sorry, I completely missed that in pick phase. Gonna be playing on those windows. Leary gonna be picked off very quickly by Mazda. Yes, the smoke off the board. So that's very, like a lot of the late plant that you might use for like smoke as denial is now off the board. The only thing you really have is the Legion Mines left. Yeah, Jimmy's coming out a little bit strong. 
However, it is important to note that C4 is still sitting there waiting with that <laughs> that C4 from below for whoever tries to plant below Skylight. Looks like Masaka is going to try to get some sight from the windows onto the two bomb sites. That's going to be an open wall into Cigar from Red. As we all still see C4. C4 has moved up a level now, back into Library as Dyer's gonna be in Cigar, and they have full control of Cigar right now, except for that little small corner of Cigar where Nerd's gonna be playing. Uh, Misaka's gonna be breaching up a, uh, a wall into, I think that's... Cigar? Yeah, outside East Balcony. As he's gonna be looking for any picks on through Freezer. Bungo is gonna be holding that window in Cocktail Lounge. That window. That, yes, that window. <laughs> oh, Nerd Gamer is going to get a pick onto Dire Legend, putting it back even for GMU and NC State. However, Nerd Gamer is going to take a lot of damage as he's going to pick up its Mazda. My boy Phil Swift coming out with the damage count for you as C4 does get the C4 That's onto Pops. Of... That's a lot of damage, but quickly going to be taken away with that nice flex seal heal. Flex heal. Oh, I like the sound of that. Misaka actually going to be put really low, but taking out C4. There goes your all your vertical play, but you have 15 seconds left in the round. They're going to have to do something. They're going to have to do it fast. As picks might will be going off from Bungo. Sniggerbone's going to take a kill, but won't matter because Andrew's going to get the refrag. Yeah, Sticker taking out that goo mine that Andrew just placed in the doorway into bar definitely gonna alert or definitely did alert him of the presence and taken out for the round when uh that was very close looks like gmu actually had the advantage towards the beginning but uh started to fall apart a little bit there let's see if they can maybe get their first win of the map here on reading room yes we're gonna be seeing reading room fireplace so Interesting things that you're going to want to look out for for this is the vertical play from above. The attackers, I'm surprised that you're, you're we're going to see the sludge, but a safer bet would be the buck. We're going to be seeing the vigil put out because there's no IQ. So vigil can just roam freely. Undetected. But yeah, vertical play going to be happening with the sludge. Nomads is probably going to block off the stairs for any rotates up by the vigil or legion or mozzie. Capital probably going to be used to push down from vertical play and then the thatcher thermite just open up cigar wall yeah that combo mozzie and vigil is definitely going to make clearing out third floor very hard because not only can you not refire uh vigil because obviously you don't know where they are um exactly most of the time but you know getting out possibly three drones with the mozzie is definitely going to really help hold that third floor piano room and you know as that as you said verticality is very big on this map um, especially on this site. So being able to hold out, even just waste a minute and a half off the clock, is really going to help out in C State. So we're going to see some drones already. One drone taken out by Dire already. Drones being so useful in this map. We're going to be seeing a lot of shotguns opening up those walls right now. Still no hashtag Quasi ACOG on C4. However, you know, looks like on they are going to be playing upstairs in piano. For a second, I thought you meant like an ACOG on this C4, like the actual gadget. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what that would help you with, honestly. Looks like Andrew is maybe looking to get a spawn peek. Not, maybe not going to find anyone. Just yet. Looks just like give it time. Give it time. Spawn peeks take time to cook up nicely. Oop, Misaka will take a tiny bit of fall damage there. Not too much. As Snicker is uh, playing around Christmas Market, maybe looking to get an angle on one of those piano room doors. Windows, I mean. We're going to see a nice peek from C4 playing Cigar. Holding that verticality down, because as soon as you get to lose control of Cigar, you've mainly lost the objective. Yeah, definitely, Verkali is going to come into play. As we already see, GMU pushing that third floor with Pupsog, droning it out into Bar and Thatcher on, or Snicker on the Thatcher, opening up those hatches. Dyer's going to be taking a C4. There goes your, all your vertical control. 
control. Now you're just gonna have to go to town on that floor to gain control of the sites vertically. As hatch will be open, so Mozzie might be able to toss a Nitro up there. Dyer's gonna take out Nerd Gamer. There goes your Doc, Misake. Uh, Lear's gonna go to free frag onto Misake. Misaka. Misake. Gosh. Um, Zog's and Pup's gonna, pick gonna up take Lear. Leary. Now it's gonna be uh, 4v2. Looking pretty good for GMU right now. As there goes Bungo. And now you're in a 4v1. And the last player is, I believe. Uh, no, I'm still on site, but just on the wrong side. But he does have a peek all the way through. They're gonna be going, breaking uh, all the floor around him. He's gonna get one pick. No, nope, not a full pick yet. He will get. Oh, there's a nade cooking. I'm just jumping all over the place right now. The nade will not hit anything. Um, Nomad's actually gonna be downed right now, and Dyer's gonna be low health, but Dyer's still gonna get the plant off. And now he's gonna Dyer. be just repelled outside. Yeah, Sticker Bones is going to look for that flank into Raining Group. Looks like we'll get picked off. A lot of shots going down. Andrew is at one health. The frag will go out from Pubsog and will actually land. Fragging out Andrew Ryan for the first win of the map for GMU. We get it 1 1. Can we get a Kobe in chat? Yeah, that was definitely an interesting decision uh, from NC State to open up that hatch um, in piano. Uh, because that was opened, I believe, in prep phase or early action phase. Uh, so, on one hand, that helps you control the site if you have um, someone up there, too. But, you know, at the same time, if you lose that as quickly as NC State did, that's very detrimental. Because, you know, as you said, verticality is all about that site. And that's exactly what we saw, exactly what you predicted. Uh, once GMU took third floor, they pretty much just started getting frag after frag after frag. Uh, and, you know, it did take a little bit of time to pick out pick up Andrew at the end, but they had the bodies to spare. Just throw enough people at Andrew. That one's going to hit. <laughs> One will stick. Yeah. And that I nade mean, did stick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with the plank going down, it's very hard, very hard to 1v4 on uh, disconnect the sites when the hallway is taking control. That's... That's one thing I've noticed about Reading Room um, when I see teams play this is really if you lose control of that that hallway by the laundry room, then it's very hard to rotate between site because you just get picked off um, if the attackers have control of that. And that's kind of what happened there. Once they got control, Andrew really couldn't contest the plant. Um, we are, however, going to see Kitchen uh, being picked now. Uh, what do you think is really going to be the determining factor in terms of how teams push and play this site in order who wins this round? So what I normally see from this site is you have a castle playing bakery behind a deployable with a bunch of ADSs on it. So they can no longer push into uh, bakery safely. So you put your top frag, like your, um, your entry frag, you're usually in that position to just click heads all throughout that. Your reinforcements will be pretty basic. Then you have castle barricades going into bar from small bakery into large bakery. And I forget where the third one goes. Just because my brain's leaving my body right now. But that's how you usually hold on to bakery because when teams don't do that, they have full control of bakery almost instantly. Yeah, now that we got the uh, the site analysis for someone who who actually plays uh, <laughs> Collegiate Siege, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not me. Um, we are going to get already a 45 seconds in action phase. We haven't seen any any action at all. We've seen, you know, cameras being taken out, like holes being opened in the walls. But so far, it looks like uh, Jimmy's opting to drone out that third floor, probably work their way top down. Um, it looks like we do have one outside by garage, if um, I can see correctly. But uh, it looks like most of their push is centered around third floor. I'm... I'm kind of upset that I'm not seeing any Valk play because Valk is so strong on this map. There are so many, me being a uh, very sweaty Valk mate. Um, you see so many, I found so many good spots. I know there's a lot more that I've yet to find, but there's so many good spots on this map to gather intel and the camps are so well hidden. But speaking of well hidden, I believe Andrew was pretty hidden when he got the kill on the pub. As there goes your vertical uh, control sledge. As there's going to be Capital Misaka very low, pushing down red as he's going to hit another Legion. Maz is going to pick up a kill onto Leary with the headshot, putting them into a 4v4, but now it's going to be a 3v4 as I just spoke, as Andrew's going to pick up a double kill. 
Yeah, definitely uh, GMU's attack definitely slowed down there. Uh, their push from Bakery is actually still alive. The two operators who were there originally are still there. Uh, however, you know, GMU, or sorry, uh, NC State now has an extra operator to flank around, and they can definitely use that to their advantage, as I believe it's pretty much at this point all GMU is doing is just holding in this, hoping for someone to walk in front, as it's Mazda is going to get fired at. Looks like C4 is going for the kill. Can exchange some shots. Not much going off. Looks like C4 going off. Some damage. Looks like the C4 did not connect. It's Mazda is going to have to pick out C4 if they want to have any chance at all of winning this. Looks like, yep, it's Mazda is going to pick up the kill onto C4. A Snickers picked up Andrew. But he was oh, down. Refrag onto so it's Mazda. It's 2v2 as Bungo is going to take some shots from there. Bungo is actually down. It looks like it is. Stickers one two v one is all left to He's still winnable. Third game. Go. But as I say that, I feel like he just ate a lot of bullets and lost. Yep. Dyer gonna get the last kill. Putting GMO, GMU up for the first time in this game. Yeah, GMU definitely looking better on this map than they did on co they did on coastline. They are now uh in the league currently, uh with a win that definitely did very good at uh coming back, you know. Um, it was really all in that um, one, one, the, one of the biggest interactions was, I believe it was, it's Mazda was against uh, C4 in that like lobby area. And that really helped out the team. Once they got um, uh, C4 out, they really hit the time to flank in. And that's what we saw happen there uh, was a pretty well executed uh, pinch push from both teams. Uh, you yeah, know, speaking of which, you mentioned you mentioned you uh, wanted Valkyrie, so uh, yeah, I did. I don't. It's six pick hasn't happened yet, and I wanted to mention the Blitz too, but Blitz is already gone. I don't want to say anything and then the Valkyrie go. Rover, you better watch this Valkyrie. I need to see these cams because I like to rate cams. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, please don't like... six pick. You got six. Pick. You got six seconds left. I believe Valkyrie we're gonna see the Valkyrie stick. Leary doing some support. Um, <laughs> in all chat for his viewers, as we're gonna start the defense round for SCSU on Valk, because Valk's being AFK right now, C4 not really doing much. Um, <laughs> that's yeah, that's not Valkyrie Rover. What are you doing? Okay, we're gonna be seeing a pretty default cam on that watches. I'm gonna explain all the cams. That cam watches a lot of balcony. Watches for the default plants that happen, and you also see a slight peek into uh, Red Stairs drop if you're lucky. There's gonna be a rotate happening from uh, Cigar. That's not Cigar. Yeah, the new hatch, new Balk, uh, Heaven, all that stuff. Nerd Gamer gonna go for the spawn peak with an ACOG this time. Valkyrie's still gonna be holding on to those Valve camps, probably for late game, as you usually pocket one to like get. Oh, there goes the. Boss is gonna be dropped instantly into this round. Um, oh, the Valve cam going underneath the uh, white stairs area to watch the window, cigar, and white stairs. As there's someone repelled, uh, I believe C4 almost got a pick off onto that. And the last one, you could pocket for later. You can put it outside, because there's a couple spots that you go outside. I don't like to call it my outside ones. Because those are secret. But, <laughs> as I speak, Snicker's going to take out Leary and going over to Dovenshire. Yeah, looks like Snicker was definitely expecting that uh, peek from Garage. Usually it comes off. It's really good to have someone watch that um, while everyone else repels up. And, you know, that's what happened. That definitely benefited them from getting the Kide early, out early in the round. Uh... Looks like you know they're doing their pretty standard standard pushes. They're getting they're getting the hatches open. They're trying to put pressure on cigar, and so far nothing too out of the ordinary is happening. Andrew is holding the same place they were last time. Probably looking to go for a similar hold. That's really nothing's happening right now. I feel like I should mention pocketing a camp is used for late game. So, you know when you toss a drone, like, and you tell your buddy, like, hey, can you check this out for me? It's like that, but instead of a drone, it's a cam. So, if you're holding, say, a um, cocktail site, you toss it into white. If your white cam's already gone, you say, watch this, anyone pushing up the stairs, then you go for the peak. 
But speaking of peaks, uh, Bungo actually gonna be taking some hits off, and a nade's gonna go off. Not gonna connect right away. Nerd's actually gonna be overhealed right now instead of using that lovely, lovely, lovely flex stim. Uh, <laughs> onto uh, Bungo for to heal that lot of damage. Capital Bolt's gonna go off into Cigar. Still an even 4v4. C4 gonna go off. Not gonna connect. Uh, yeah, 40 seconds left. left. Something's gonna have to happen. And it's gonna, Nerd gonna be. Speaking of something happening, Misaka's gonna go down to Nerd. He's not gonna watch over to White. Snigger gonna get a double kill onto Bungo, who was low health beforehand. Now it's gonna be put down to a 3v3 with 25 seconds left. They're gonna have to make go for a push, plant, and denial to get this next round. Nerd has a very good angle into the entrance, into bar. Dire Legend is gonna take a lot of damage. To actually gonna go and down to the game. Dropped. Now that's a triple kill for Nerd. Looks like Snickers might be able to pick the kill. Nerd Gamer is gonna get down, oh. try to pick himself back up, and will actually uh, get taken out by Snickers, leaving it to no Snickers with a triple kill. Leisure was oh, in the leg, time. no time. NCSU is gonna bring it back 2-2, saying, hey, you got this lead? Not for long. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely that, that whole- It's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> From Cigar in that back construction hallway all the way onto site definitely helped because once Dyer entered and uh, got killed and the diffuser was down, that definitely threw GMU off rhythm enough so that they were didn't they were just a little bit short on time. If they had two, three more seconds, they might have been able to get something working in that two v two scenario. But you know, without the fuser, there's not much, not much you can do. Oh, we get to see the elite Valk played by Leary now. As I say that. Oh, not going to get six picked. Thank you. And it we're going to see like the Blackbeard come out instead of the Misaka play in Capitao. And we're going to see a Maestro played in Fireplace Mining. Yeah, uh, definitely NC State lucky to differ it up. Um, I'm going to, I wonder what they do. They're definitely going to use Valkyrie and Maestro a little bit more on that third floor to try to deny um, really the third floor take that GMU really swept on. Um, a couple rounds ago, and you know that that can help them, but they don't really have any dedicated rovers in the sense of uh, they have Jaeger, uh, they Valkyrie. have Jaeger, Legion, Valk. Those ones are possible rovers. Any two speed can be a rover, technically. He will be a little bit clunkier, a little bit louder, but he can make more noise to distract them from what's actually going on. The attackers, what I mean by them, um. Valkyrie's a decent roamer, especially when you hold on to those cams. We missed a cam, sadly. Um, wish I saw where it got put. Probably towards site. I believe it was actually on the landing in red stairs. I might be wrong there. Um, uh, top or... left corner of mining. Yeah, okay. First one went top left corner of mining. Oh, there's the one, there's the one outside. outside. That goes onto a window. That's not one of my sneaky ones, but you can see all of like that balcony outside of mining and he, uh, Lear's actually going to be going for a possible spawn peak. Not like close spawn peak, but never mind, he's gone. Um, Lear's going to probably hold on to that verticality with his flanks being covered by barbed wire. Nerd bringing the bulletproof camera to watch an angle. Probably that hallway. As Pup is gonna go for the vertical play as Sledge droning himself in as nothing else is really gonna be happening as of right now. Nothing big, might I say. Bongo is gonna try to contest that window. However, he's gonna drone that repeatedly. Uh not looking too good for the uh NC State hold on top as they are being contested by pretty much the entire force of GMU, especially with Saka on that Blackbeard. On that sky, that's definitely gonna be a very dangerous thing to try to contest. Looks like Bungo might actually be able to pick up a frag here on a Pup Socks. Looks like Pups is actually gonna take out C4. That's gonna be a huge pick. It's not their Maestro out for later round. It's Miles is actually gonna pick up Leary. And there's another kill there somewhere that I somehow missed. Uh, but a lot of a lot of frags are going off. Nerd is gonna boost. He's gonna heal all of that lot of damage with his uh, flex heal. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of damage, look at the damage onto NCSU as it's a five v two. 
And there goes Sledge going for the vertical play. That is so key. I'm gonna repeat this as much as I can. Yeah, NC, NC Saint not faring too well as they were on this time on the last match. It's Dire is actually gonna open up that back wall onto Fireplace. Is actually Sticker is actually gonna pick up Nerd Gamer. It's all up to Andrew once again. He's gonna have to ace if he wants to win it. Plant's gonna go off. Um, nothing really he can do. And there he goes. He will get one kill to pad his KD, but won't be enough as we saw because gonna be there for free frag instantly. Yeah, Andrew getting the kill onto it's Bazda, followed by Masaka getting the refrag for the round win. Um, uh, apologize for earlier. Uh, they went last time they went reading room fireplace. Now they're going fireplace mining. Uh, so that was that was my bad. But you know, both I mean, second I called floor that sites, properly, they, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, both for uh, both second floor sites. Uh, NC State failed to defend. It is their last defense. Last time they're gonna have to worry about picking that site was the last round so they're going to kitchen and they did lose kitchen so what do you think they have to change in order to win kitchen and go into the next half tide well we're going to be seeing the jaeger this time so if they do hold bakery like they should they have a bandit as well so k is going to go for the hatches to stop any vertical push that Thermite Thatcher might give, or just slow them down slightly. As well, it's Bandit's going to be holding on to some of the major walls in sight. Uh, you're going to probably see Mozzie, like Leary's, the de their dedicated roamer, so it seems, as well as Andrew going to be roaming, and C4 possibly roaming, as or C4 might be on the soft room, actually, now that I say that, in Bakery, just to try and hold off that Bakery push, because last time they did push heavily from Bakery, and... It showed it in the outcome of the round. Yeah, definitely good to note. A little bit, of, a little bit of statistics catch up here. Uh, sorry. Um, I'm trying to trying to see. Sorry. Uh, Snicker is currently seven and one on that Thatcher. Uh, not just you know playing that support out, but also trying it out for their team. Uh, definitely. Um, coordinating very well. GMU, I feel like. Definitely more in key with each other and more in key with the map than they were on Coastline. And you know, we can see just by the scoreboard, uh, already in this half, GMU is doing better than they were the entire last map. Looks like we're gonna go for a pretty similar hold uh, to what we saw last time. And it looks like, you know, G uh, sorry, NCC isn't really looking to change much. They are picking um, Bennett and Kai now, uh, putting double the amount of electricity. Not opting to take Maestro this time. They're just going to be top floor, opening up those hatches to quickly get away. Um, it seems to me that NCSU is insanely strong on attacking. So I feel like some of these defenses... Might not be the strongest, but they don't, they're not really worried about it because they feel like they could win it on attack. Yeah, I mean, tying going into the half is definitely uh, not the worst thing you can do. Um, definitely would be more beneficial for them to go into this 3 3 and then go down 2 4. Uh, however, you know, it's all up to how they defend. One minute in, really no firefights at all. I say that as gunfire is going off upstairs on third and second floor. Uh, looks like C4 is going to try to contest. A uh, little bit of a push from NC State. Sorry, for my GMU. Oh, Maz is going to get into a gunfight. Oh, Lear's going to pick up the double onto the Blackbeard and Nomad, putting them down. Oh, and Lear's going to get a third. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're That's definitely doing their so job. so quick. Doing their job third floor, getting a very quick triple kill. Definitely going to put Jimmy in a very hard spot. Once again, it is Snicker and Dyer. Stuck in that bakery almost without help this time. They do have yeah, Exophonics no and EMP. It, it's, it's pretty nice to see the Thatcher Thermite being the last two alive though. As they are partnered throughout this. Yeah, it's pretty important to know that last time that GMU came back down from this position, they had their Nomad on its monster to flank, and as I say that, C4 gets the pick on his Snicker Bones, leaving it just up to Dire as they get picked off. Uh, by Leary. Tying C4 it up is going to take the ace, saying to Leary, hey, I'm the only one that's allowed to ace on this team. Yeah, so Leary getting the 4k. 
But still, going to half, 3-3, three, three, not bad. Definitely a much closer game than we saw on the previous map. Uh, now that we're switching sides, uh, there's still the possibility of this map being tied. You know, we have six more rounds to play at most. And it's, you know, it, it could go either way at this point. We are going to see Bar Cocktail Lounge be the first pick by GMU. I definitely, they're definitely already playing this different. Um, when they opted to ban Clash instead of Echo, we can now see why. GM, or sorry, NC State oh. did not we're want actually to actually going to be teaming Echo. Yeah, you were just mentioning that. Sorry, I just noticed. But they're not bringing the IQ? There is the Thatcher, though. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely going to be interesting. Um... Uh, it's Maza actually positioning that shield, maybe? Yeah, very smart position, because not only does that still give cover from, uh, Skylight, but it also lets you get your, uh, I'm drawing a blank on what the name of, uh, those guys, oh, Yao Kai's out of free. And, you know, that allows... His frisbees, his frisbees. Yes, his frisbees, um, out uh from not just playing on site but to more like a little bit of a, a roam help here although there's not a ton of roaming to do as you know you are third floor mostly your roamers are going to be looking for getting picks exterior and maybe holding and waiting for the plant from skylight nerd actually going to be careful of the spawn peak potential on this map as he did get a double like not a double kill but he did end up racking two kills off of spawn peaks Looks like. Yokai's going up late. One's gonna be put into bar. Right under skylight. And oh, Capitel might have heard it jump up though. Yeah, he's kinda looking towards that direction. Uh C4's gonna be watching the road uh the flank out onto the one wall. Uh I believe that was west wall. South wall? I don't know. Southwest wall? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's Mazda is definitely going to position that Yaokai to help out Pup Zog on that white stairwell hold. Um, that's definitely going to come in handy, especially because, you know, with the only minute 45 oh. left in the round, not much is happening. I said that as Masaka is going to feed Andrew for a little bit of health. By a little not bit, a little I mean bit. That was a lot. good amount of damage. That's a lot He's of damage. close to two tap range. One tap Snicker. from that deadly Snicker in the corner. Snicker is still holding the bathroom. However, Andrew is taking a lot of shots. We'll get picked off. Oh, actually, no. Larry will pick up Asaka. Instead, and Andrew is going to save as C4 picks up Dyer. Uh, Snicker's going to get into an altercation in a minute if they push up through the uh, doorway. As I hear the shotguns going off right now towards C4, as Maz is also going to get dropped. Putting them down at 2v4. As C4 gets dropped from Snicker, as the altercation. Pup is going to be. Oh. So Nomad going off. The Echo is no longer on the board, so allowing that plant to go down. Snicker's going to have to push into sight with a shotgun. And as I say that, two quick picks will come off from Leary and Andrew, putting NCSU up another round going into round eight, with just finishing off round seven. Yeah, as you foreshadowed earlier, NC State definitely very strong on that attack. Known where to push, doing very good at getting uh, some quick clears there, uh, especially that plant that was very strong in the way they positioned that and held that. Uh, GMU definitely still in this going back on bar cocktail. What do you think they have to change up to win this round? Just kind of win their gunfights a little bit more and not, they kind of double stacked on some areas, I believe. Or they were just caught off guard. They just need to be more aware. It's the only thing that I'd like to mention. Um, if we could get Rover to double check the scoreboard really quick, I'd just like to check something. Um, as if you look towards the kills, it's almost equal throughout with an eight, a five, and a couple threes and twos. Almost equal for both teams, as the scores are pretty equal. Um, standout player is going to be Leary and Snicker, of course. Followed by Mazda and Nerd for respective teams, as well as Andrew. C4 not really cutting in as much on this map. Maybe not feeling as comfortable. I don't know what. I don't want to mention too much and then... 
the wrong, like very wrong, but like right now we're gonna we're seeing a really good showing from both teams. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Scoreboard shows very close games. We are 3-4. Most of the routes have actually been pretty close. We had a few um, probably equal number from both teams of blowout rounds where they've just like absolutely demolished the other team. Uh, for example, um, GMU with that very strong attack onto that reading uh, fireplace site and then NC State um, with the blowout on the previous. Uh, and, you know, we've had one or two others uh, for each team. Uh, however, you know, it's still a very close game. Um, Interstate might be up by one attack, uh, but you know all GMU has to do to tie it up is just win this, and then it j could just be a back and forth of six rounds for both teams. Uh, Nerd still watching for those spawn peaks as he, as I said before, he too used them. I don't want to repeat that too much. I feel like that's a broken record, but anyways. Uh, uh, Snicker's actually going to be down a little bit of health already. I believe that was from the Twitch drone. Dar is looking to hold the relatively the same area as they did last time, holding that reading, possibly looking to get some oh. run out on that western balcony. As oh, I say, it looks like nice Andrew go. is going to pick up Pup Zogs. Definitely a very detrimental kill to GMU, as that is their maestro down not even a minute into the round. But I will say, it's not that bad, as you still have Mazda on the, uh, the Echo. Which is still good for late game. Yeah, you might have one of your key players down, but you're not fully out of the round just yet as Echo's sitting in Freezer. But as I say that, Leary's actually going to be taken out by Misaka. Misaka's going to heal up all that damage as another kill's going to go off from Andrew getting the double kill onto Dyer. Yeah, Andrew clearing out that second floor. Looks like... They really can push uncontested from that side. It's Mazda. It's going to be checking stairs. Looks like Snicker is going to be pushing. Snicker holding the Possibly same site, actually. Off. Bungo's going to, might be punished again for pushing that same site as Snicker's going to peek, possibly. Oh, he's going to drone it out first. Masaka is going to exchange some shots. Andrew Ryan taking some damage. Definitely still very close round, despite GMU being down an operator. They do have... Three very strong, very strong positions. Saka chilling and having looking across to that hatch. It's like an EMP will go out from before. Andrew Ryan taking some shots, shots all around. Looks like Snicker is trying the best they can. The Saka will get the double kill on the bungalow. Sorry, I talked over you. Go ahead. Uh, C4 will get uh, on a Snicker bones. Saka is trying to exchange shots and doesn't get the kill on the C4, giving them a triple kill. I'm just going to mention really quick, he has a potential for an ace right now. There is Could come into play as Nerd Gamer is looking into Freezer. It's Mazda trying their best to hold on. We'll exchange some shots. Actually, Nerd Gamer takes out oh. Saka. It's all up to it's Mazda. Mazda is going to take some damage from the fire, though. He's going to have to push out towards Nerd Gamer. He will take out Nerd Gamer with a headshot, but quickly refragged by Andrew they're gonna win their fifth round now going into round nine yeah Andrew definitely definitely good job forcing its Mazda to pick between diffuser and the other attacker very close rounding and you know we've seen a lot of these rounds on this map where you have very close like that that was pretty much as close as you can get you get a 1v2 to 1v1 very quick last second and, you know, that's a lot of quick action. And that pretty much comes down to your positioning from earlier in the round in the gunfights and how well your roamers really slowed him down. Uh, so GMU opting to go kitchen instead after losing that third floor site twice in a row. Uh, do you think this is still um, GMU's game to either tie up or win, even though they're down 3-5? Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot bigger comebacks. It's definitely a very big possibility for them. But right now, as NCSU with the steamroll of attack that they have going, it doesn't look like there might there might be a tie, but I don't know if it, they could bring it back. I don't want to say too much and be wrong and like talk bad about the team because both teams are doing a great job at playing. Both games are super close. It is very, very close. Yeah, perhaps GMB will have better luck and do better on kitchen site. Uh, looks like 
we're seeing pretty similar lineups except for the fact that they're now bringing four th four three armor operators um which they're, they're going a little on the heavy anchor side definitely going to be playing more towards information and uh site denial uh would not be surprised if they had probably masaka on the roam uh as for nc state looks like they're going you know Pretty standard lineup. Both teams have been running approximately the same thing on this map in terms of attack. I'm gonna let you take over for a second as I have to do some research. Alright. Um <laughs> Snickerbones is gonna be chilling out in uh, you know, as I said, uh probably gonna be roaming around for the team because there's not really much the others can do in terms of roaming because you want to keep Maestro and Echo, Echo alive as long as you can because similar lesion the longer they're alive for the more they do in terms of help helping your team. Uh, you know, 30 seconds in the round. Not much happening so far. Uh, you know, just NC State droning in. Looks like we might see a bakery push here, perhaps a flank from Garage. Looks like they're not really utilizing uh, the second floor as Snicker is back on site. It looks like they have everyone in that area with Dire Legends actually playing over in coat check by Bakery. A little bit of droning from Larry as C4 and Nerd Gamer like to push up, use that Thatcher Thermite combo to open up Bakery Wall into Kitchen. Looks like it's not quite going off yet. Let's wait for the EP to roll out. Oop, looks like Snickers going for that last second reinforcement as that wall into Bakery is going to get opened up. Yaokai will go, go off as Nerd Gamer is stunned temporarily. Masaka actually did get down. Plain Doc will be able to get themselves back up. Possibly? Yes, Masaka is going to get back up. I believe there was someone that was running a laser sight. So I've been told. In the meantime, it's Mazda difficult out Nerd Gamer. Definitely putting it in favor of Team View. However, Leary. Gets a double Larry. kill onto Masaka and Pubzog, putting it in favor NCSU White. Larry pushing hard onto site. In around Dire Legends coming in for the flank. Ooh, looks like Larry gets a triple kill as Dire Legends picks up Andrew Ryan. It is very close still with Larry on site. A little bit more health. Ooh, quad for quad kill. kill from Larry. As Larry picks up Dire Legends, could this be an ace from Larry? It's all up to Sinker Bones, who's off site in mining. There goes. There goes Bongo, as it's now a 2v1. Both both of the two uh, sneakers going to be low. Leary's going to be low. Leary's on the 4K right now. He's he's watching that rotate onto red stairs. Sneakers is going to have to be careful. Oh, and he sees the shots and he's going to get the ace. That is two aces for NCSU now. Yeah, Larry definitely pulling a good showing once again in the same fashion that C4 aced on Coastline. Definitely using a slight early advantage in terms of positioning to really push hard on the defense. You know, we mentioned there are a lot of anchors. And whether that's just how it just ended up being executing or whether the fact that GMU really didn't have roam potential, there wasn't really anything they could do coming um, against a push from Bakery. We are on match point, however, uh, is now th the most we can have is three rounds and GMU has to win all three defenses in a row in order to tie up this map. Otherwise, they lose to NC State and lose a series for the night as NC State did win the first map. Um, yes, they're going to have a partial win now. Yeah, if, we they, are seeing, if it gets tied up. Yes, we are seeing Bart Cocktail. GMU lost this twice. What do you think they're going to try to do, looking at their lineup, um, to just do something different than what happened the last few times? I don't know. The NCSU's attacks are just so solid and well put together. They clear out the roamers efficiently. They're timely, so the time isn't running down once they're getting to site. And by the time that they're on site, either all the roam any roamers that are left are like trapped outside of site or the anchors have been pushed out of site <laughs> and they can't get back in yeah dire legend picking up that valkyrie is definitely going to help with a little bit of the um 
the Intel, especially holding Cigar Lounge, which Jimmy was lost fairly early in the past couple uh, rounds. Um, Larry is currently doing very well, 13-6, going to pick up that IQ, which is going to help a lot against its Mazda and Dire Legends, Echo and Valkyrie, respectively. That's going to really hurt um, Jimmy's ability to not only use Intel, but to use their gadgets effectively. They actually have a third cam on Mazda, I believe, if we switch to him super quick. That's not Ma oh, not Mazda, Misaka, sorry. Oh, so Ooh. Misaka's actually running barb, not bulletproof. Pup's gonna get a spawn peak. I don't want to say spawn peak. Pro probably was a spawn peak. Very early kill for Pups. Anyways, um, on to Nomad, actually. So that's gonna help, help prevent the roam. Yeah, Bongo on the Nomad being taken out. Looks like... GMU actually is uh, a good good chance to hold Cigar successfully as that Nomad really hurt them the previous time to holding Cigar. Leary might get into an altercation with Pup in a second as Pup feels like he's starting to get pressured around, sur surrounded as Leary's going to get off the rappel and go up to the roof. Stinger's going to be holding the same angle for the third time we've seen him on this site. Echo's going to go off onto Ryan. out From outside of site too, Pup could jump out right now and get the kill. He probably could rack up a double or even triple kill. But as I say that, he will get a double kill. But not in the sense that I was saying. Uh, C4 is going to pick up a kill onto Dire. Trying to hold on, but right now it's not looking favorable for NCSU. As two of the players are super low. And a TK headshot onto Leary. And Maz is going to get a kill onto Leary. Now it's going to be a 1v3. Don't really know what happened there. Yeah, it's all but, up to Andrew. Uh... It's all up to Andrew as it's just a 1v3, putting GMU possibly ever so closer to tying up this map. Uh, you know, that's that's what their goal is right now. Andrew taking a minute to collect themselves all the way down very bottom of lobby series. I hear pre pre preplay C4. It's going to get actually shot out. Oh, no, that's a cam getting shot out. My bad. Uh, Pup's Oops, gonna have an angle onto Red Stairs. And with that angle, he will... Yeah, prone angle onto Red Stairs. Gonna be able to take out the remaining player of NCSU. GMU not gonna go down without a fight. We are now on round 11 of GMU Still versus point. NCSU <laughs> on Cafe. Uh... It's that was definitely a lot better shown for GMU. They are going to go on kitchen again. They are bringing Bandit already and Jaeger more roam potential than they came with. I think they realized what their mistakes were and they're definitely adapting. Uh, they're as you said, they're not giving up. They're ready um, Ooh, to come all out. Dokey. Yeah, Castle Castle Two actually. Dokubi will come out uh, first. For Dokubi first. probably going to get say oh not six picks. We're going to be seeing Lion. First could be and line actually of the session tonight. Uh that's gonna be definitely interesting. Uh they're really going hard on that anti room <laughs> with Nomad Dokabi Lion. Uh that's gonna be very hard to deal with, um, especially now that GMU is running a lot more roamers. Uh it is gonna mention that Dokabi now has frags, which is definitely gonna help out a lot having frag grenades and anti roam. Definitely gonna make for a strong up. So I think what really hurt uh, NCSU last round was that early pick onto the Nomad. Um, just so they didn't have a lot of their rotates covered. We're gonna be seeing Jaeger gonna get the default hatch onto sight. Pretty pretty default setup. There's gonna be echoes thrown out right now. Nothing really of note. Oh, right. I, I thought I mentioned this, but that, this will be our first castle that uh, is normally used on this site. We're going to see the rotate cutoff for that, which is a default one on castle for this map. We're going to be probably seeing small bakery with a rotate for the castle if he gets there in time. But as we say that, Leary could possibly get the pick onto Dyer as Dyer's stuck now in that corner. But I don't think 
Oh, Dyer's gonna run away very quickly. He's gonna get away freely from that. Yeah, it looks like the armor panel did actually manage to go off in Bakery. That's gonna slow NC State down just a little bit. They're gonna have to deal with that and other castle barricades as Dyer is hanging up on top of Red. There's gonna be an active bandit trick happening on the main wall of Bakery as someone's laying down on Red Stairs, I think. The first yeah, line gonna go out, not gonna get any ping. Dyer is gonna be going for a flank down to White Stairs. There goes the first thermite charge as the bandit trick's gonna come off. Calls are gonna be going out. C4 is gonna pick up Mazda. Then Misak is gonna pick up C4 in the quick refrag. Uh, Dyer's gonna get dropped by Leary, putting them now up 4-3. Uh, yeah, definitely those Rome Core Ops definitely helping. As that there last extra summer charge goes down, they're gonna have to flank around if they wanna get in or push hard through Pantry. Definitely not what NCS, NC State wants, but in the meantime, Larry does get a kill onto Pupzog. It's really gonna be down to Masaka and Snickers just to hold this themselves. As the line does go off, Masaka will actually go down by Larry again with the triple kill. It is all up to Snicker as he picks out Nerd Gaming. Snicker with a double kill, also taking out Larry. Larry. And that's Ooh. gonna be the game. I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that, that will be game, as uh, NC State did uh, get their seventh round. Um, that's going to be for the night. GMU, uh, or NC State winning Coastline 7-2 against GMU, and then winning Cafe 7-4. Uh, so that's definitely, you know, definitely good showing for both teams. GMU definitely feeling a lot more comfortable, a lot more synergetic on this past map. Uh, that was definitely... Also, a lot of close rounds, too. That was very interesting to watch um, how the teams really played that close end-of-round dynamic and how they pushed together on a map that really hasn't got a lot of playtime because it's so new. I'm... Yes, I, I would like Leary for the interview. Uh, as we wait for the interview, I think we're going to take a brief break as we get things set up. Welcome back, our viewers of CEA. I am Awkward, that's Dobenshire, and I am here with Leary for the post-game breakdown. Um, Leary, number one question that I always ask, and it's my favorite question. Pre-game rituals for your team, what are they? So, typically we all meet like an hour beforehand, and a lot of it's just T-Hunt running through matches, talking about the match beforehand, what maps we're playing, etc., what all we want to see from each other, and sort of what strats we would like to use sometimes. So that clash strat on Coastline, for example, <laughs> was discussed. Uh, didn't work out so well, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> I Yeah, I saw a lot of uh, utility dumped onto that uh, for you being the clash. Um, yeah. Follow-up question. Not to, not to this follow-up, but my next question being, what happened with the, the TK headshot? We didn't pick so it up. I saw an echo drone. <laughs> And oh, I no. started shooting at it. And guess who walked in front of it? 
Ooh, that's rough. I thought you were trying to reset him, but aim for the head. <laughs> Bro, why would I try and reset him with a fucking headshot? What? Nah, dude, my aim's better than that. <laughs> now, if you if you ask some of my team, they would just say halfway through that match, I just wasn't hitting my shots. I say it, and then boom, 4K, 3K, 3K. I don't did know, you not man. pick up an ace? I did pick up an ace later. <clears throat> yes, so there's that as well. I think you picked, you went 17 and 8 on Cafe. Something like that. Yeah, that's great showing. How about that ace by C4? What was going on in the ch in in your so, call when that happened? Legitimately, we were just it was a fucking scramble. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> that entire round was a scramble. Um, I don't know if Dopin has any questions. He's just kind of sitting uh, quietly. Yeah, so uh Cafe is a, you know, new map this season. Uh has have you guys practiced it a lot, or is it just one of the maps you just kind of put aside and uh, say you'll worry about later? Because some teams have really like said we're gonna be, we really want to be really strong on this map and put it first. And some other teams have just said, you know, we'll we'll know how to play, but it's not, we'll just ban it away. So here's the funny story: Cafe is in a limbo state for us. Um, we're not opposed to playing it. We're not gonna pick it first, but we're not opposed to it. <laughs> So we've scrimmed it, we've got strats for it, but eh, <laughs> there are better maps. Yeah, I mean that I that's would... seems to be the consensus for a lot of teams. Uh, you know, it is a new map. Do you feel like you'll be more open to it over time, or is it currently just do you just not? Does your team like the way it plays, or is it just kind of not really? We like up to the your way it style? plays when you don't have a fucking gridlock on the board. Let's be real here. <laughs> you can't go up a staircase. If gridlock's on the board. Yeah. So, so that's just that shoot it. Staircase so, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's really where the gridlock ban came out. Um so it's it's nice to get inside and, and really see like, you know, what the bans come from. Uh do you th uh, I forget you you guys defended first, correct, right? Yes. Um and you didn't you opted to not play Echo. What was the call for that? Um most of it was just we don't I think Echo would have made it through the ban phase, honestly. Yeah. Uh, All right. It, was it just gets, like, gets through, and no one knows what to do with it. <laughs> it was like, we have Echo on the board, but we have strats without Echo. <laughs> Why would we play Echo when we have perfectly good strats without him? That is true. Um, right, um, awkward, do you, have, do you have any more questions? You guys are really strong on attack. What are, what are you, like, your... Any like secret details you can give us on how you get so strong on attack? We suck. We are absolutely terrible at this game, and we <laughs> have never been this good on attack ever. <laughs> really? You guys were you had a great showing. We were on attack. a <laughs> massively defense-sided team. Like, if you ask probably most of the team, defense is probably most of the people's favorite side. I personally oh, yeah. prefer attack simply because it allows you to be a bit more aggressive. But a lot of our a lot of what we do is based upon winning defense halves. Those attack rounds were just the combination of experience and playing together for most of the season. We've just sort of brought it together. Yeah, I mean you had you had nine out of eleven attack attack rounds on that. So that was, you know, very strong. Um very strong showing. Uh, you know, GMU Got a little close in the first half of uh, Cafe, but, you know, on attack, you guys really brought it back. So I would say, you know, attack. looking at just your performance tonight, I'd say, you know, attacking uh, was your best thing by far. Mm. So I'm going to be real with you on Cafe specifically. I was looking at it, and I'm like, probably the best thing about Cafe is that a 3-3 three -three split is pretty even. Like, it's not good. It's not bad. It's sort of expected. And then to go on and start, then go attack after basically the good feelings of coastline attacks is just a good morale booster for that entire match. So, very well said. Um, my gosh, you, you guys had some epic plays there. My voice got destroyed. Like, my voice is actually dying right now. Gotta, gotta lube up the throat a bit, you know? Right, Dopenshire? Yep. What what do you what do you use for that actually? 
Uh, you know, just the usual, some casual. Anyway. Rogue anyway. energy. 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 By uh, our proud sponsor for CEA. Um, use code CEA at checkout for 10% off. All proceeds go to the price pool at the end of this. I've been awkward. That's Leary. We have Dope and Shire as well. Thank you to Rover as well for the observing. Uh, tune in tomorrow where we're going to have Arizona versus Penn State uh, at the default time of 10 o'clock. Not default, actually. I lied. 10 p.m. And I think that's it for the night. Thank you all for watching. Good night.